time to change out the nutrients, at least to a certain degree. And I'll explain that. The first thing I have to do is I have to unplug the pump. It's on a timer here. There's the pump. It's up high so no water can leak back into it. And it goes into this uh, PVC and feeds the entire area to bed. If you want to see how I set that up, I did a video on it. And um, I'll put the link in the description to that video for the build-up of the air water culture beds. Aerated water culture beds. But anyway, I close off the air. I open up this side, which also goes down to what is normally air going through the PVCs. And I create, I added a hose here, and I ran it outside. Now I'm using it as a siphon. And I'm going to siphon off about one-third of the nutrients out of this 150 gallons so about 50 gallons and I do that for a number of reasons one is because the water holds the plastic in place so if I go all the way down the plastic is going to be all over the place um, another reason is because I don't want to shock the plants with the a 150 gallons of really cold water from my tap um, and also don't want to completely deplete the nutrients. I don't want to put the plants in shock. So I'm going to deplete about one-third. I'm going to fill it back up with clean water, let it sit for a couple days, and then repeat the process, and that's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to replace the majority of nutrients over two days. So if you look in here, you can see that it's coming out pretty quickly. It's just a regular garden hose and I got a Y on there so I can turn the valve off and stop the water from siphoning out. It's just a regular old garden hose I use for various things. So the flow is coming pretty good out of there so it shouldn't take long at all. Then I'll just simply reverse the process. I'll add a water inlet. I mean I'll add the water hose from the house here and I'll pump it back into the very same thing I drained it from uh, very slowly because the PVC and the aerated water culture beds is not glued so I don't want to blow off any PVC pipe underneath those roots and have to try to fix that so I'm going to put it in there very lightly after I do I'm going to decrease the flow very lightly using the same valve and uh, yeah that should work hopefully this won't take longer than an hour to do all of it so I lifted one of these top supports It normally goes over the edge here like it does here. Keeps the top from spreading out. So I just lifted it so I can get into here and take a look at the water levels going down. It also gives you a nice look at the new plant roots. Um, so yeah, once it gets down about a third of the way, I'll just uh, do what I said out there just a minute ago. One last thing I mentioned is that uh, that I didn't mention another reason is because you I don't want the roots to get dry at all and so as long as they can reach water they'll wick that water up the root system and it won't dry out but if I emptied the bed and refilled it there it's just not good to do it it's not good to do a complete complete change out when you're using a big water culture bed like this um, so on top of this Water is topped up. Nutrient water is topped up. Let me show you what I mean by that. In this 55 gallon drum, I have got a mix of regular strength Master Blend water soluble nutrient, just like you mix it on the package. This goes through the inside the winter grow room through a small little quarter inch tube and feeds a float valve and that float valve um, keeps the water levels up. So if you look here you'll see on the top of that Y there there's a quarter inch hose that comes from that Y that comes down and goes through the wall into the grow room into the water culture bed. If you want to see that valve I don't want to lift up that end but if you want to see that valve and that setup it's again in the link in the description. So I measured, by turning the valve off, I measured how much it takes to fill the water culture bed 
there's a little I use it as a level here and put it in here like this and I can't do it now because it'll fall through with the water going out but I measure it and I figure out how much gallons it takes um, to fill this back up I did it manually and right now the plants are using about seven gallons of water a day nutrient water <clears throat> excuse me that would normally dribble in from that tank I just showed you the 55 gallon drum and um, just keep it topped up so an indication <clears throat> pardon me an indication that you need to do a water change out besides doing it regularly is when there may be issues uh, that will present with the leaves like right here this looks like a magnesium deficiency and by the way magnesium is quite common in large body aerated water cultures to have that so you can supplement it instead of doing a complete water up change out um, if you see that deficiency you know a week later or two weeks later you can supplement magnesium sulfate instead of having to change out the water all the time so it's been roughly two months since this was created this is the first time I've done this and you can see not all plants are affected by it the peppers they look really good uh, the eggplants are starting to show a little bit and the tomatoes are definitely showing some deficiencies and they're just getting older too and tired and that happens as well I mean you can tell by looking at the newer younger um, tomatoes but it does need to be changed out and I would normally not go two months in, in this winter grow um, to insurance I would do it probably about once a month just to make sure and probably before you even get to this point so if you're wondering how it's going through the pipes if you haven't looked at the video you see those two PVC pipes there those are they go through the entire L of the culture bed and they have little tiny holes that normally provide oxygen or aeration um, which is essentially oxygen and they oxygenate the whole body of water which keeps the plants from drowning <clears throat> excuse me when you have a aerated water culture bed like this you don't have to worry about how far in the roots go you can dunk the whole plant in because the whole um, water culture bed is aerated if it was a cracky without air you could not do that you'd have to leave space so some of these roots near the net cup there could create air roots and they will do that but um, I always think air is better to add because it helps with disease pre prevention and it keeps an aerobic versus an anaerobic um, environment within the water and it helps prevent root rot and other forms of disease like I just mentioned. So anyway, in those two pipes there, when air is not coming out and it can be used to inlet the nutrient water or the water that you now see draining and that's what I'm using it for it's going down the water level is rising slowly which is what I want um, I want to take a water measurement uh, temperature measurement it's always right around 65 and and that's another good thing about having a large body of water as a aerated water culture or water culture in general it's not swayed <clears throat> excuse me by temperature extremes or massive pH or nutrient imbalances so the larger body of water you have obviously it takes more to affect it so it's typically I use this gun here it's a laser gun It's typically right around 64 65 degrees almost all the time even when it's cold let's see what it is now with the cold water running in 60 degree 59 Yeah, right around 60 degrees, so it's cooling off. By the time we get up where we need to be, I imagine it'll be um, low 50s. I'll check it again. So, uh, there you go. I'm not worried about the PPMs. Um, I do check pH somewhat regularly. But I'm not too terribly worried about PPMs. They're fairly consistent. I fill in the 55-gallon drum out there. 
it's exactly the same, almost exactly the same every time. And the PPM range and the pH range, that's because my uh, source water, the house water, it starts around 43 to 44 ppms and then by the time I add the nutrients it lowers it raises the ppms significantly to the ideal range and it lowers the pH from around neutral to about 6 which is perfectly ideal now because it tops up in the reservoir um, right now obviously it's going to be less ppms and the, and the pH is going to be higher closer to neutral by the time it's said and done but as it tops up, you know, that seven gallons or what have you that adds to it every day, it's going to slowly raise the PPMs and slowly raise uh, or lower the pH. And um, that's just, you know, normal. Plants don't mind it at all uh, if they're in the normal range. And they don't mind having, you know, say a thousand PPMs one day and uh, 200, 250 PPMs the next day. I've not seen any drastic changes. Uh, imagine if they grew that way for a long period of time, it would affect the newer growth. But um, the roots do a pretty good job of finding nutrient and bringing it to the plants. Alright, we're back up to the top. Let's get a temperature reading on it now. Ooh, it's not as cool as I would have thought it would have been. It's only 58. thought it would be down lower. That's good though. We don't want it to get too drastic and shock the plants too much. Alright everybody, that's it for this video. I have done or explained or attempted to explain how I change it out. I'm going to do it in two days again just like I did. I'm not going to show it because it'll be exactly the same. And then I will uh, let the full-blown nutrients start topping up. Um, bringing the PPH up and uh, parts per million and uh, lowering the pH and all that and getting the plants back to fresh nutrients. This is Brent you guys. We'll see you later.